Hello. Lately, I've been watching YouTube videos by Melbourne transport planner Philip Mallis and his series about Melbourne's forgotten freeways. I'd highly recommend giving his channel a view, by the way. Anyways, I noticed that there's next to no equivalent YouTube content on that topic for Sydney, even though we have just as many cancelled expressways as Melbourne. Today, I plan to begin fixing that. Today, I'm in the fairly small side of Huntley's Point, which is somewhat close to the city, and it's home to the Bayport Bridge, one of the biggest bridges in Sydney that carries traffic over the Parramatta River. It's part of one of the alternate routes from Sydney's northwest into the city, um, which is used as an alternative to the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And on its southern end, it has a fairly normal end. It turns into an arterial road. It has traffic lights, it's a pretty normal road. But on its northern end, something interesting happens. There's a fairly big and inexplicable motorway interchange between Victoria Road and the fairly local Burns Bay Road. This is one of the only remaining hints today that they were going to build an expressway here. Yes, that's right. They were going to build an expressway from the Gladesville Bridge here all the way to Sydney's north and northwest. This expressway would have been called the Lane Cove Valley Expressway. Today, we're going to investigate this expressway, find out about its planning, why it was cancelled, and all the hints that remain throughout Sydney's north and northwestern suburbs that there was going to be an expressway cutting through the area. Welcome to Building Beautifully. Before I begin, massive credits to the website Ausroads, where I got a lot of information for this video. In 1951, a proposal known as the County of Cumberland was released. Many expressways were included in this proposal, including the Lane Cove Valley Expressway. Land was reserved over the next few decades for this expressway, and in 1971, the following excerpt appeared in the DMR Journal. The proposed route of this expressway extends north from Fig Tree Bridge along the west side of the Lane Cove River to North Ride, then to West Pimble, and from there to Warunga, where it will link with the Sydney Newcastle Expressway near Peckery's Corner. At its southern end, the expressway will join the Northwestern Expressway at Fig Tree Bridge to provide fast and convenient access from the city to the northwestern and northernmost suburbs of Sydney. The Northwestern Expressway was just another expressway which would have linked the Lane Cove Valley Expressway with the Western Distributor in the city. Essentially, the Lane Cove Valley Expressway was a quick link between Sydney's north and the CBD. The plan would have had it tear through kilometres of the Lane Cove National Park, consuming plenty of bushland. In 1959, construction started on three new bridges, the Fig Tree Bridge, the Tarbin Bridge, and this bridge, the Gladesville Bridge. They were all open by 1965 and formed part of the first part of the Lane Cove Valley Expressway. Looking at this massive bridge, it's kind of easy to imagine it being part of an expressway. On the northern end of the bridge, we can see that there is a motorway interchange. It's a Pelican interchange, as according to Roads Australia, a website written by, well, me. Here, traffic heading on Burns Bay Road gets to go straight, even though this is the Quire Road. And traffic heading on Victoria Road has to take an exit, even though this is the busier road. This is perhaps one of the biggest hints that Burns Bay Road was originally going to be part of an expressway. The Lane Cove Valley Expressway. North of Victoria Road, Burns Bay Road becomes expressway grade for only about a kilometre, originally planned to be part of the Lane Cove Valley Expressway. Right now I'm near a fairly unnecessary interchange between Burns Bay Road, uh, which is the expressway grade road, and Church Street, the local road through Hunters Hill. This fairly unnecessary interchange between two fairly local roads is perhaps the biggest hint that there was going to be an expressway running here. Well, that and this sign. Pedestrians prohibited on expressway. Use footpath. Since no one actually calls Burns Bay Road an expressway, it's quite a remarkable sign. 
and clearly a copy of the original sign from the 60s. After this interchange, the road crosses the Lane Cove River over the Fig Tree Bridge. Indeed, you can actually see that the piers for the bridge are a little bit longer than they have to be. This was to allow the expressway to kind of be clipped onto the bridge so that it could continue north of here. After this bridge, no more of the expressway was ever built. This was the last part that saw the light of day. So, what happened? While many people weren't pleased with construction of the project, and protests erupted when part of the Northwestern Expressway, which the Lane Cove Valley Expressway was going to join up with, started construction in Piermont near the city. The Neville Rand government ultimately cancelled construction of the project, along with many other freeways, in 1977, meaning the freeway only ran for about 2.5 kilometres between Dremoyne and Linley Point, merely a shell of what could have been. When it became clear the freeway would never be built, the entire route was degazetted and freed up as open space progressively over the years. Lindley Point to Epping Road in 1988, and then Macquarie Park to Arunga in 1996. I'll get to Epping Road to Macquarie Park soon. All of this prevented the freeway from ever being built. There are many hints of where the expressway would have run that exist even today, which I'm about to go over now. The freeway would have run across the river over a bridge here, before going into the Lane Cove National Park over on that side, pretty much tearing through the bushland on the west side of the Lane Cove River and pretty much destroying it all. Instead, today runs the beautiful Lane Cove National Bushwalk, which is probably a pleasant alternative. Now, a second new bridge was to be built over the Lane Cove River, according to the proposal plan included in the 1971 DMR Journal linking the expressway with Burns Bay Road. Now, I found no evidence of plans for this bridge other than this image, but I do believe the bridge would have been roughly located around here, just north of Waterview Drive. So, after cutting through lots of bushland, the freeway would have arrived at Mugdala Road. Now, I'm not 100% sure of the route here, but it may have passed through the road here, where a gap randomly exists between two sets of houses. Alternatively, it may have cut through Magdala Park. After this, the freeway would have curved between Epping Road and Gilder Street, before swallowing Pitwater Road at Blenheim Park. We can see a lot of patches of land around this intersection, which is the biggest hint that an interchange was planned to be built here. Indeed, this park, Blenheim Park, only exists because it was going to be part of a massive interchange between Epping Road and the Lane Cove Valley Expressway. Now, I was actually a little bit misleading earlier because a bit more of the expressway was built in the form of the M2 Hills Motorway, which opened in 1997. This motorway links the Hills District, which is my area, to the city and runs along some of the Lane Cove Valley Expressway Reservation between North Ride and Macquarie Park. However, do note that it wasn't built as part of the Lane Cove Valley Expressway, unlike the other parts. The Lane Cove Valley Expressway would have branched off from the current M2, just past Alma Road in Macquarie Park, before cutting haphazardly once again through the Lane Cove National Park. Passing to the west of Pimble West, it would have arrived in South Taramara and curved over the north of Jeffreys Street, destroying some houses, although I do believe some of these houses were built after the land was freed up. It would have continued before meeting at an interchange somewhere here on Kissing Point Road. Kissing Point Road was going to be widened to four lanes, probably to provide a link road to Epping Road and down south towards Eastwood. However, this plan never came to fruition since the Lane Cove Valley Expressway was never built. We can see a lot of evidence of this today along Kissing Point Road since there's so much random pieces of land. For example, this massive stretch of land that just stretches as far back as the eye can see. There's a fair bit of untouched bushland in South Taramara, 
reserved for the expressway. That includes here randomly, on the north side of Nancy Bird Avenue. Indeed, if we have a look at historical imagery, we can see that the houses along Nancy Bird Avenue, as well as some of those on Barwon Avenue, are actually new, very much indicating that these houses were only built after the land was freed up from the reservation. After this, the freeway would have cut through some more untouched bushland, before joining up and consuming the Broadway in Wurunga. The southern section of the Broadway has no houses on its east side for this reason. Continuing north, the freeway would have consumed the Fox Valley shots, as well as some untouched bushland on the south side of the Commonara Parkway. The freeway would have then continued north to Fox Valley Road. At Fox Valley Road, there's quite a bit of untouched bushland which sits right next to the road, a pretty good indicator that the expressway was going to run here. In fact, there's this sign, which is ordering people not to dump their rubbish here, set up by the Roads and Traffic Authority. Now this is quite funny, we know the sign must be pretty old because the Roads and Traffic Authority hasn't existed in over 10 years. The freeway would have continued up north through untouched bushland before consuming this massive park, which exists in lieu of houses on the west side of Seaton Avenue, just south of Eastbourne Avenue. Once again, there are signs demanding no tipping of rubbish, although these were instead erected by the Roads and Maritime Services, who also don't exist anymore. After this, the freeway would have finally merged with the current day M1 Pacific Motorway at Warunga, before continuing all the way up towards Gosford and Newcastle. The M1 was eventually extended, however, it was extended southwesterly to the M2 via the North Connex, rather than southeasterly as planned for the Lane Co Valley Expressway. The final nail in the coffin of plans for the freeway. Truly, it is shocking to think about what could have been. So many hints exist throughout Sydney's northern suburbs that an expressway is going to run through here. Hints that go unnoticed by thousands every day. The Lane Co Valley Expressway would have slashed travel times for thousands of commuters but it also would have destroyed a lot of precious bushland and it would have encouraged car journeys over public transport. The Lane Cove Valley Expressway was a bold plan, an ambitious plan, a destructive plan, and now it will forever remain a plan lost to time. If you like this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.